Hey everybody, welcome to today's video, which is gonna be all about the standout samples that I've tried this past month. I order a lot of samples. I think I spend more money on fragrance samples than I do on full bottles of perfume, just because I love trying new things. I love exploring new brands and new houses. And a lot of the perfumes, I'd say most of the samples that I try never get talked about on this channel. They never see the light of day. And I really wanna change that because just because I don't buy a full bottle of something Maybe I don't feel like I need a fragrance like that in my collection. Doesn't mean that it's not worth talking about or I don't find some gems. And I, I really wanted to start doing this on a regular basis. So I'm gonna talk about five or six samples that I've tried this past month that were standouts to me that I felt are worth sharing. The first fragrance I have here is called Summer Dim and this is from Scent Trunk. Scent Trunk is a lot of things so i'll link their website down below it's a place where you can buy fragrances a la carte you can get a membership but um, it is also a collective of professional perfumers and they commission different perfumers mostly indian artisan to make perfumes based on a theme or a place or a certain material and summer dim is the fragrance for august and it was made by perfumer Clara Wheel. Clara's inspiration for this fragrance was the Scottish coast in the height of summer. But for me, when I smell this fragrance, it really embodies the end of summer, beginning of fall, that transition period, which is such a special time of year for me. Where I'm at, it is so warm, so hot, that summer doesn't really end until, I'd say, mid-October. That is when the evenings start to get cool. You see those really beautiful cotton candy sunsets and that sort of summertime carefree feeling starts to go away and you know fall is coming. And that is what this fragrance sort of feeling that it gives me. I smell a lot of white flowers in the opening, magnolia, jasmine, there's some neroli. I also get this sort of juicy sun-baked fruitiness. There's this fruity floral sweetness that is mixed with this creaminess, this milkiness that I really love. It's not heavy at all. Everything feels very bright and very lifted. Even though this has a honeyed, hay-like beeswax accord, it's not too sweet. It sort of lends this almost haziness to the fragrance. It reminds me of a Polaroid picture, sort of that blurry, hazy feel that a Polaroid picture has. This is not your typical summertime fragrance which is why I've been really enjoying it for this summer to fall transition period. I think it's really beautiful. If you haven't uh, heard of Scent Trunk, I'll link them down below because I think they have some great perfumery, especially if you're into indie and artisan perfumery, uh, check out the link below. The next sample I have is called Kafka on the Shore from a house called La Folie à Plus Yeux. These were super hard to track down. I had to do some internet sleuthing to find these samples. I saw the bottles online and I was very intrigued, but I didn't want to blind buy. So I, I decided I wanted to try the whole range and that's what I did. Kafka on the Shore was hands down the most special of the entire line for me. Each fragrance is inspired by film or art, literature, sculpture, etc. And this particular fragrance, Kafka on the Shore, is a book by Haruki Murakami. I felt like this fragrance was very special because as soon as I smelled it, it was sort of like a juxtaposition in my mind. It was both warm and cold and spicy and fresh and just everything that is the opposite. When it opens up, I smell this smoky incense, but also ocean air. It's not like sea air, but it is like very, very clean air. Like they've taken all the toxins out of the air and it's like right after it rains and you have that kind of minerality. It's very, very odd, but it smells amazing at the same time. It's a bit woody and leathery. There are these soft spices and then an underlying sweet soft iris musk it's a beautiful fragrance I'm not sure if i need a whole bottle of it but really really enjoy this one the next two fragrances are sort of like yin and yang they're from the same house centauri perfumes but they couldn't be more different and these are brand new releases from centauri which is an independent brand out of england i've talked about them on this channel before i own two of their fragrances and we'll start with Om first. And Om is for the person who has a deep appreciation 
for oud, natural oud. And natural oud has so many different facets and nuances on its own. I haven't really delved into the complex world of oud, but there are many oud lovers um, that just wear oud on its own because it is so complex. But then you start adding different accords, like in this fragrance, it is animalic. It is, to me, a bit mentholic in the opening. It has almost this kind of icy cooling sensation. It might be due to the lavender. It's aromatic, it's herbal, and then on the dry down, it has that sort of funk that civet and musk and oud often does. You either like it or you don't. When I first sprayed this, I sprayed it on paper. And I thought, oh, this is really intense. I don't know if I can pull this off. But once I sprayed it on skin, as often happens with perfume, it changed. And it really softened out the roughness and the intensity. If you are somebody that really appreciates oud, loves oud, especially natural oud, then I recommend you try out Ohm. I think Peter, the perfumer, really strived for a meditative fragrance, and I really think he hit that mark. And now we'll talk about Anthea, and Anthea is much more my speed. It is absolutely gorgeous. It is a fruity floral fragrance, but done in a very unique, very refined way. It has this juicy, citrusy, fruity opening, but not your typical citrus. It has a little bit of tang and sweetness and a bit of bitterness. And you can almost taste all of those elements. There's a bit of wateriness and then these soft, wispy, powdery florals. I'm thinking violet and heliotrope. It's very ethereal smelling, very um, lifted smelling. And I really, really enjoy this one. It's definitely on my two buy list. Next up is a fragrance from the brand Le Van de Bois. And this is a brand that I wanted to try the entire range of. Luckily, they did have a sample set on their website. So I was able to get eight fragrances. They have another one now, so you would get nine. But I paid 20 euros for the eight fragrances and they give you a 20 euro credit if you buy a full bottle. So not too bad. There were about four or five that I really enjoyed. Although some of them reminded me of other fragrances. I did, I liked them. I think they're really made well. They're quality fragrances. However, they weren't too unique. The one that I've been really enjoying is 1900 Le Le Proust. And this is a fruity floral tea scent. Let's see how they describe it. They describe it as an oriental floral tea. This opens up with smoky tea, blueberry, citrus. I get something sweet and very tart, almost like black currant. There's no black currant listed here, but I get a lot of black currant as well as vanilla and then some amber in the dry down. This is very close to the skin. It is not too heavy or cloying, which is what I really like about it. It does remind me of a few fragrances from Floreku. If you're familiar with the two fragrances, One Umbrella for Two and I See the Clouds Go By, it's kind of a mixture of those two fragrances to me. But I prefer this one just because I feel like it's more balanced. It's not, it's not as sweet, I don't think. So, I really enjoy this one and I will be exploring a little more of this house, this brand. I've tried all the fragrances, but I really want to empty my samples to get more of a feel for them. This last one is called Gajamada from Luban, and this is from their Aristia collection, which is their more exclusive collection, which you can only find in stores. I was able to try the entire range, and this is the one that I fell in love with. This is spicy and smoky and with that sweet powdery scent of dates. It is very warm and very resinous. I love everything about this. I've been looking for a scent like this for quite a long time. Uh, a spicy resinous scent with the accord or note of dates. And I just love that smell. And this is it. I wish this wasn't so expensive. I would have bought a full bottle by now, but it is like close to the 300 mark. So I'm looking for something that is a little more affordable. I might just end up getting this because I do love it so much. Dates to Light from the House of Oud is a bit cheaper, but I prefer this one a lot more. I have tried out one called Ramdan Nights from Jusette recently. 
it's just not quite what I'm looking for. So if you guys have any spicy date fragrances, leave them in the box down below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in my next video. Have a great week. Bye.